know? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I hear you. So, so we'll do it as I'll do mine. I'll do, I have a quick, I'm going to run over real quick. I'm going to just have a last thing. Difficult. And if I get a slip away for the... We'll get this. We'll get, this, we'll get okay. in it. I mean, it's it's 929 now. So, yeah. like, my yeah. whole intention was to get this done. I am texted frankly. Well, of course, that's good. I said, Representative Anderson says the gift for us. Yeah, I feel bad for the Dev Cult dudes. It's me. Yeah, it's the world today. And, uh, and let's, yeah. Shine. No, can I show you a Maybe you can crash the uh, Senate press conference. There you go. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor
the nation's only industry-led organization engaging in legislative efforts to expand and further legitimize the legal cannabis market in the United States. And I want you to ponder that. Scott Walker wants to subject poor people to drug testing simply because they are poor, while he wants to take money, while he takes money from the Drug Trade Association. While Scott Walker wants to deny poor people food, health care, and job training if they test positive for marijuana, he's taking money from the marijuana trade industry. Now, I've been here for 20 years, and I've researched you know, elected officials, federal elected officials, state elected officials, local elected officials, and I will tell you without a doubt, this is the most hypocritical thing I have seen in my 20 years of doing this kind of work. Now, Senator Latanya Johnson and Representative Jimmy Anderson have led the fight against Scott Walker's attacks on the poor. And I'm thrilled that they've agreed to be here to talk a little bit about their feelings on this, their continued fight to protect our poor people against Scott Walker's drug testing. Um, and so we'll have Senator Johnson come up here first. Good morning. In November 2016, Governor Walker became head of the Republican Governors Association, where he heads 33 Republican governors. And a month later, he began petitioning President-elect Donald Trump for a waiver to drug test applicants and recipients of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP. In February 2017, Governor Walker, as head of the Republican Governors Association, accepted a $25,000 donation from the National Cannabis Industry Association. However, in June 2017, Governor Walker sends a, a letter to the federal government requesting a waiver to drug test Medicaid recipients and able-bodied adults with dependent children, claiming our state would like to encourage healthier lifestyles through differential premiums for childless adults who purposely increase their health risk while receiving benefits. Governor Walker's hypocrisy in playing politics with people who need health care access is extremely appalling. To say that you are going to drug test recipients and applicants for the SNAP program, a program that allows our low-income families to eat, is also appalling. But receiving a $25,000 donation as head of the Republican Governors Association is extremely disheartening. It makes me angry. And he should be held accountable. These individuals are not drug-induced addicts. They are low-income, hard-working families. And their only fault is the fact that they fall below the federal poverty level. And for Governor Walker to try and send the message here in his home state that drugs are bad, but accept thousands and thousands of dollars from the drug industry says it all. Governor Walker understands that there are people in this state who go to work and they work as hard as they possibly can every single day and they just can't seem to get ahead. But yet these individuals get forgotten time and time again when it comes to his benefit. And in this case, it's a $25,000 donation to the Republican, uh, uh, Republican Governors Association. I myself was without health care before I accepted this position. A few months after I accepted this position, I was extremely ill. Did a stint in the hospital for about a week before it was discovered that I had a massive tumor. A tumor that could have been discovered years ago with just a simple ultrasound. But because I didn't have access to health care, that wasn't an option for me. It was extremely, extremely expensive for that tumor to be removed. Costs that could have been prevented with just regular maintenance and upkeep. Our low-income families deserve the right to eat, and they deserve the right to have access to quality health care. And Republican or Democrat, these should be simple principles that none of us should be against. This should not be a partisan issue. 
but it's being made one because we're being told that these individuals, whether they test negative or positive, they don't deserve the right to have access to basic health care <coughs> or food. But yet Governor Walker gets to accept thousands and thousands of dollars from the drug industry while penalizing the very people who need access to these services the most. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Uh, so um, first off, thank you Scott Ross and Senator Johnson for joining me today. Um, now, uh, while Scott can talk more about the campaign finance issues that obviously Governor Walker is dealing with here, I want to talk more about um, the policy issue that I feel uh, really matters here. Um, so let me put this as plainly as possible. Uh, Governor Walker's plan to drug test Medicaid recipients is going to be an enormous waste of taxpayer money and will do nothing more than denigrate and demonize our most vulnerable citizens. Now, it wasn't long after I heard Governor Walker's proposal that I introduced legislation of my own to require that those who receive <coughs> millions of dollars in taxpayer credits and grants and loans through the WEDC to also be drug tested. You know, it, it shouldn't matter which side of the poverty line you fall on, the rules should be the same. And just because somebody can write a five-figure check to the Republican Governors Association or to his re-election campaign, doesn't mean that they get to play by a different set of rules. Now, along with the obvious unfairness of this piece of legislation, again, there are real policy problems with what Governor Walker is proposing. Now. Many other states have proposed similar uh, uh, proposals, and they have all been failures. These programs spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money, and usually, typically find only a handful of drug users. And often, these drug users do nothing more than use marijuana. Even here in Wisconsin, where we test people for under the Wisconsin Works Program, Less than one half of 1% of people tested actually test positive. Now suffice it to say, the real hardworking taxpayers of the state deserve better than this political stunt. What's even worse is that Governor Walker is going to waste our limited state resources sending what will be only a handful of marijuana users to drug rehabilitation, when what we should be doing is putting all of our resources and all of our time to address the real drug problem in our state, which is the opioid epidemic. In fact, I am calling on Governor Walker to not spend a single taxpayer dollar on this silly program until we significantly reduce the number of people we lose every year to the opioid epidemic. Now, unfortunately, I don't hold out much hope that Governor Walker is going to listen. The sad reality, as I have quickly learned in my short time here in the legislature, is that scoring political points and feeding into the politics of resentment are what matter most to the governor. Regardless if it wastes taxpayers' money or if it even addresses any real problems, Governor Walker will not turn down an opportunity to turn this into another point of division, hypocrisy be damned. Wisconsinites deserve better. Thank you. That's what we have. Happy to answer any questions. I'm sure you may have some questions for them or me about the research on this. Um, so go ahead. Do you have any evidence that Scott Walker was involved in soliciting this contribution or signing off on accepting it? My evidence is the Art Republican Governors Association fundraising letter that you all received from Scott Walker, I'm sure, where he crows about the money that he raised. 
Um, the RGA's record fundraising is a direct result of the hard work and meaningful reform accomplished by every Republican governor, said RGA Chairman Governor Scott Walker. With this fundraising success, the RGA is in prime position to reelect our incumbents and elect even more Republican governors this cycle. I would say that is probably a question for Governor Walker. Did he personally solicit this? I will tell you that my research shows this is the first contribution from NCIA that the RGA has received, and it comes under Governor's watch, his new stewardship. Any other questions? And again, like I, I do want to just point out, you know, we are talking about something that currently in the state of Wisconsin is illegal. And Scott Walker has spent his time trying to deny people health care, petitioning to deny people health care, job training, and food if they partake in this. And at the very time, again, in the midst of all of this, in February of 2017, his organization received, as part of its $17 million take, a $25,000 contribution. Can you imagine, has Scott Walker revealed this in the midst of these discussions? A payment that I might add, that one $25,000 payment is more income than the majority of individuals that are receiving SNAP benefits and Medicaid. For some of those people, that's their yearly salary. And to accept that donation and then to be a hypocrite and say that drugs are bad in Wisconsin is an issue. It should be an issue for everyone in this room. And I'll add that, it, again, I'm new to politics. I would consider myself a political person prior to my experiences with the Affordable Care Act, as, as a lot of you know. But um, it, hypocrisy is a real sickness in this building. and. Most of us, when we get into office, we do so to try to hold up higher standards. We should try to be the best of our communities. And if we continue to allow hypocrisy like this to go unchallenged, it will only fester. And so again, we ought to do better, and Governor Walker ought to do better. Thank you, everybody.